like to explore further. So who would like to get the ball rolling? I see Magda. <laughs> Eager. <Hey, thank> <laughs> yes, thank you so much. You know, I was thinking that first of all, the whole experience of these CPDs was, was an experience. I mean, the applause, the pi oh, piano, then the, the right thing. But thank you so much for the moment. Now back to our <laughs> case study. I was so impressed by the, the atmosphere. I mean, how tense the client <laughs> was till a certain moment. In, at the moment, uh, <laughs> after 30 minutes, I saw her laughing, <laughs> but it was not easy. And then what I noticed about the way, the way she sings, how she put all together everything <laughs> the mind was, <laughs> and how nice. When, when Dr. Ben spare and put every bullet bulleting, because we are speaking here about this propriety framework of bulleting, how nice was separate and then the client gained clarity. <laughs> so I'm stopping here to let others. <laughs> Thank you so much. One I need time. to say, if, if the client <laughs> don't smile, I will be crying. <laughs> But honestly, it was really very tense and I do agree with Magda. I, I was like, wow, okay, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> Neither is the client. Like the client was also shocked, you know, okay, what was this question? What was he asking? <laughs> you know, both of us was like, okay, we are not understanding each other, but we seem to be understanding, but we don't understand. <laughs> It was very tense. <laughs> it seemed to me, Dr. Ben, that you everything was so clear for you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <No>? <laughs> I was clear that I was not very clear. That is for sure. <laughs> and, and so I, 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 I was really, truly really struggling because I know that I'm, I'm not clear. And I also know that my clients is also not clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so I have to resort to the last moment and say I'm not going to I'm not going to hear I'm going I'm, I'm not going to see my clients I'm going to just focus and close my eyes and tune in tune in <laughs> so it was it was after a long long while I think you know that we, we managed to connect together as to we, we get to understand okay so this is beneath the topic this is beneath the situation, and that's what is the undercurrent that is not conscious. It's, it's like it's, it's not that the client is not aware of it, but I think because the clients were so invested in the situation, you know, and, and that's very normal for any clients who have an issue that they have been thinking around for a long time it's not easy all of us went through that stage especially your husband your, i mean your boyfriend come to you and say will you marry me it's like i mean i mean you, you i mean you had to process that before you say yes i do right okay maybe for some of you, you immediately jump and say oh yeah i mean we all went through those moments where we were hit with a decision and we, it takes time to really process it Right, and, and, and we really need that thinking partner or someone to, to have the ability to just reflect back, you know, not the content, but how we are relating to the decision. And that's why, you know, CMA, we, we, we teach our coaches not how to ask questions. You know, we focus a lot on what are you observing here in terms of the three principles that we share, the thought process, the experience on the element, and try to make use of those observations to make sense of the experience that people had, you know, and, and these experiences are real and is unconscious to the client, you know, and you can hear today our clients mention, yeah, you know, I, I was, I, I mean, I handled big decision, but when it comes to this, it somehow, you know, it, it just, it just get a hold of me. It's not that the client is weak. This is real. If I take a knife and cut your hand, don't tell me you don't feel pain. <laughs> like, right, we all felt it to some point, you know, and, and so it was tense because I'm, 
I, I, I can't see what's going on. <laughs> Neither is my client. You know, you know, the, you know, the client's mind can't go beyond the situation, the context, the first layer content. And it takes almost 15 minutes before we get to, okay, now we got it. <laughs> this is what we are talking about. <laughs> Great. Now back to you, Mark. I'm back to you, as a dad. So sorry. Yeah, I just want to say how I appreciate. Um, what I really appreciate is uh, the boldness and the courage of the coach at this point in time to not just go with what the client is offering and yeah. to just want to move the conversation as a process yeah. holder, but yeah. to really verify what is the content I am getting. True, true. And to stay true to that and to understand, okay, is this really useful content for us to yeah. be able to move the conversation forward? So here I really want to um, acknowledge and appreciate that courage and the boldness that is at some point necessary and the frankness to say that I'm not clear, so let's clarify. <laughs> and that way, supporting the client to be able to become clear that Oftentimes, as, as you mentioned, Ben, it's not really the situation or the problem that we think is the problem or the client thinks is the yeah, problem yeah. may oftentimes not really be the problem. Thank yeah. you for that. Lovely. Yeah. So thank you for your patience as well. <laughs> okay. So let's hear it from the group. Who else has something that you would like to put into the group? I, I think uh, before, before I, you, uh, before Nadine... Nadine, before you go, can I just use this opportunity to encourage everyone? Yes, you see Ben struggle in this conversation for 15 minutes, so relax. Okay, okay relax, we are all human beings. Okay, and what we are working with is real human beings. And so if you don't get it, it's normal. Okay, but trust the process, trust the training, trust, you know, what, what you are able to organically makes sense right once you are able to do that then you use your true human being i mean your true authentic self and bring that into a conversation and, and that that honesty is better than you trying to fake it through and try to be okay let me let me point my finger to an issue right i i, I think the honesty around you know this what you are able to make sense certainly makes a difference. And trust me, it's not easy for the client to hear the coach saying, uh, you don't understand what I'm trying to say. Okay. It's very offensive for a client to hear that from a coach. But I guess, you know, that is where we, we, we come to this term of what, what does it mean to be a service provider? You know, especially in this work of us reflecting back to our clients. So it's quite a good experience for all of us to learn something from it. Huh? So sorry, go ahead. Um, uh, Dr. Nu, uh, Nuwusu, is that how I pronounce your name? Yes, um, Dr. Nuwusu. Nedem yes, thank, yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody, uh, from my side. Uh, thank you very much once again, Ben. It's always a big pleasure to, you know, be with you, experience life coaching. Uh, for some time now, I have not actually experienced you, but today has been exceptional <laughs> in so many ways because um, from the presenting issue, how you introduced the client, um, was very, very good for me because um, I, I thought that uh, it's always at the point of starting a coaching conversation that clients bring their issue to the fore. Mm. But from the way you introduced it, it was like the client has pre-presented it, but you reaffirmed it from the word go. Mm -hmm. And she confirmed it. That was very good for me. Wow. And then, but as the process started, the conversation looked as if it is becoming very complex. But you unbundled it. You unbundled it. You gave three specific items which buttressed the facts. 
-hmm. and now give the client an insight into really what to hold on to. And it was at that point that I saw the conversation progressed further. Yeah. And then again, you last into the process when she presented more facts. And you're like asking her, specifically, you said, what do you actually mean when you say you are not sure? When you say you are not sure? Mm -hmm. And that brought out a key word, trust. Mm -hmm. She mentioned the word trust. Trust somebody she can trust. And that was for me very key because um, I think that was at the bottom of her feelings. Yeah. And then beyond that point also, as a way of following the process, you still linked it with the presenting issue. Now that the issues, the points are becoming clear to you, how does it relate mm -hmm. to the initial issue of finding how to manage your business, to start and manage your business. It was wonderful for me. And uh, I felt at that point that you have unraveled the real challenge of the uh, client. Oh. And so many others. But till the end of the conversation, the process was epitomized. And I think belief and practice in the process is key. Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. High five to him. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So we have to trust the process <laughs> as in, if you don't have the process framework, you are just left with yourself, your own experience, your own expertise to try to coach a client. But once you have a process framework, it gives you some, you know, handles or something to work around. Right? For example, in awareness conversation, yes, all of us are taught, determine the focus, but that's just a... I mean, the, the essence of determining the focus is truly to help the client to identify where's the point of entry for change, right? Basically, that, that's what it is about. And it takes you know, skills and knowledge to support the client to have an expanded, uh, expanded understanding of their own issue. Recognizing the science behind that, anyone that is have not processed their thinking or have not reflected enough on their experience itself. Sometimes, you know, it's so interesting to see that most people thought that they are very reflective, but apparently those kind of reflection that they have is just simply evaluation. Now think about that. Evaluation and reflection, what's the similarity? What brings these two together? Look, looking back. Looking back. Evaluation requires you to look back and then say from that point, how did I get to here? How does that past inform my present? That's how evaluation as a thinking process work. Go back and from that point, look forward and see how do I get there? That's why you end up with analysts. However, but you take a look at reflection. It's the same. You look back and say what happened. So the only difference between reflection and evaluation is that reflection does not produce analysis unless you look back and you evaluate. So can you see, most of us have mistaken evaluation as reflection, but technically speaking, they are not reflecting learning. Reflective learning is about looking back and examine our experience and find out what can we learn from that experience. So it's by reflecting on the learning that comes out from the experience that brings understanding and meaning for us to make positive change. And unfortunately, most people fall short of reflective learning. They have a shorter, uh, short change themselves with evaluation. And henceforth, you can see that people remain stuck as they constantly evaluate what has happened and not use reflective learning to process what has happened. 
So as we say that the ACC conversations or the transformational framework that we are using is powered up by an adult learning theory is based on the fact that we are teaching our coaches how to use reflective learning as a thinking capacity and not simply evaluation, which looks like eva uh, reflection. Do, am I making sense here? Oh, okay. It's two in the morning. I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, I'm going to open it to our faculty members to talk. It's a long day for me. This is my fifth session for the day. So it's quite a heavy day for me today. So uh, as a day, I'm going to yeah. pass it over to you. Unless students have some uh, questions that they would like yes. to find out from me. Yeah, Neha has been so patiently waiting. Oh, great. Neha, would you like to raise your question? Uh, first and foremost, uh, Ben... Uh, I would really compliment you that it's been around like, you know, as you said, it's two. And the kind of energy level in your brain is like all up. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 I drink chocolate. I eat chocolates with Coca-Cola just now to keep my energy <laughs> level up. <laughs> well, actually, I was thinking whether I should go forward with my question or not, you know. Go or for I it, come on. Yeah, my chocolate can last me till tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, go for it go for it Niha okay thank you so much thank you so much well I would not be in a position to start my video because I'm in a public place here oh, sure so no problem movement. hence I would not be going ahead with that sure no problem uh, so first and foremost Ben uh, the session of yours uh, you know was kind of a jigsaw puzzle mm -hmm. and there was one last you know there were those pieces missing in order to create that one picture I got so many of them. I thought there was only one missing piece, but there were a lot many. And most of them have been mentioned also. The piece that stood out for me was uh, number one, is that uh, I've been reading that and I've been attending sessions where uh, they say that the coach, you know, should make a, you may, a goodie bag of his or her experiences, thoughts, um, beliefs, feelings in that in that goodie bag and mm -hmm. keep it you know next or you know next to them till now I did not understand what it how it would actually play out mm -hmm. but today in this conversation I realized how how a coach can go ahead and do that mm -hmm. uh, which you taught at least I learned from it and uh, not that, uh, uh, you know, living in this world, the concern that the client had got, uh, you yourself come to some kind of a conclusion as a human being, you mm -hmm. know, if some mm -hmm. friend of yours is going ahead and saying, it was very clear that the, that the client was overwhelmed, that the client required, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to go ahead and uh, perhaps look for, you know, external help or, or internal help or some kind of a support system. However, you not once in this conversation did you even, you know, just place that thought that, you know, it, it wasn't reflecting. You were so blank as a blank slate. And this was so lovely to see how it actually figures out. So that's, uh, and that too at one o'clock in the uh, early morning, it's, 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 it's something impossible and thank you so much for giving me this experience well thank you Niha, for raising that i think everyone today here will has such a great relief and say wow we can say something to our client right now remember our job is to reflect back you know how we are making sense of what they are saying right the challenge here is for you to manage yourself, to be able to notice, hey, this is my observation and this is not my deduction. Right. Or this is not my judgment or this is what I'm concluding. Right. This is what I'm able to make sense. And it's like, hey, I got an idea here. I'm just not sure is that what you're looking at and I'm just offering that to you. So henceforth, 
coaching mastery takes time to progress. Yeah. You cannot, in, you know, so the pure, the pure observation comes as we nurture from stages of learning to stages of learning. Just like, you know, any skill set, you cannot bypass. And another truth of that is, if you don't progress, you actually go backwards. Right. Do you understand this philosophy? Because right. the natural thing is to progress. So if you are desiring for something and you're not progressing, you're actually doing yourself great harm because you're right. actually is decaying. And you can take a look, some of the things that you learned in the early days of your school, in, maybe in college and university, can you still remember them? Nope. <laughs> I think I've been applying them and hence... I don't know whether I remember them or not. The brain isn't the same any longer. You got it. The brain is not the same anymore, especially for mathematics, economics. You get, you still retain some basic concept, but it's not operating as fast, as effective as is it when you were actually learning it. And when yeah. you stop doing those mathematics and stuff like that, after years, after one year, you start to realize it actually disappeared to the bare minimum. Right. That's the reality. And that's my message to coaches who are already pursuing professional coaching seriously because it's a muscle. Today, you got your six apps. Well, <laughs> My wife was only 55 kilos when she was married me. But when we got three kids, she was almost 65. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> right. Muscles disappeared. Competency dissolved. If we do not progressively keep ourselves in shape. And henceforth, attending such life coaching sessions is like doing your drills, keeping your muscles sharp, to help you to stay alert. Wow, this is so amazing that I can pick up this and pick up that. So your brain is alert and processing. So that's the reason why painfully every week without fear, except for holiday time like July, you know, <laughs> you know, we, we don't do live coaching session not that we do not want okay it's just that students are too busy for holidays try to do a live coaching session in end of december you will see a lot of drunken students coming oh merry christmas <laughs> you will see them dancing oh live coaching yeah i'm so glad to be here today oh, come on Right, so only on those occasions that we have a break, but apart yes. from that, every week we you know run such a conversation to help our students to keep in shape. Exciting, very exciting, and thank, thank you so much you. for bringing bringing the uh, you know the underlying layers as you mentioned in one of your uh, earlier in the conversation. Yeah. Uh, what was underlining that under wave, that under river that you were talking about the observation. Uh, thank yeah. you, Ben. And yeah, thank, uh, you. thank, thank you. you to our uh, client as well. Precisely. And one point that I like to bring to everybody's attention is that when we hear the word transformational approach, we tend to have a very skewed understanding, believing that that's only for life coaching. It must be so emotional and deep. And, you know, you know we often associate that. But transformational approach is not just for life coaching. It is just a way to say, shift perspective. That's all, right? And to shift those perspectives, it is a very hard science of capturing what the main idea is. And that is no difference between an executive conversation. Right? To establish the statement of facts is executive skills. Right. You, I mean, ask any CEO or directors, you, you have a lot of reports to, to, to read and then you have to make some decision. How are you going to make those decisions? You rely on your executive skills, established facts, statement of facts, away from all those details. Only operational managers are very excited about 
more details, more details, more details, because they love details to solve things. But leaders don't want details. They want executive summary, facts, statement of truth. So the skills that you're learning to make Buller think is executive skills. And we're using that thinking capacity to create or to capture the frame in which the situation is presented. And using that frame, you reflect it back. And that's how we make decisions. Is that, is that useful? Great. Cool. <laughs> so next time, don't tell me. You know, I always hear students, I'm a consultant. I used to think like a consultant. Uh, then show it to me <laughs> that you have a consultant as capacity. <laughs> Right, because the transformational approach is built on executive skills. <laughs> cool, great. So maybe one or two more questions before we bring it bring it to end. And anyone else would like to ask me questions, like as in how am I looking at it, so that you can satisfy your curiosity, sort out things that might not be clear to you. Okay, so this is a good opportunity. Anyone? I have a question, Ben, but I have I a comment, if you. I know. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, uh, kind of like what Neha mentioned and you said kind of uh, made me think about this. Um, in terms of, you know, not just the process, but the ICF core competency mm -hmm. of listening actively, right? Yeah. And in there, there is something about... Um, considering the client's mm. context and the identity yes. and the experience yes. 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 to enhance um, wow. understanding of yes. what the client is communicating. Yes. And that was really clear today, like wow. how you presented it and, you know, that separating the facts, those digestible parts and framing it so that the client can see clearly and also kind of recognizing again ICF um, core competency recognizing and inquiring when there is more to what the client is communicating so it's yeah. just it's not about taking the business forward yeah. there's way more layers beneath that mm. that needed to kind of come out so um you know when we think about oh well, this core competency how how does it what does it mean or yeah. how does it look like this case study um really helped us to understand <laughs> that so Manju, just wanted to would say you like thank to do you do me a favor like can you unpack that for some of our friends as in <laughs> it's so juicy but then they were thinking okay I think those students who did the second level, you understood what Manju is saying. You consider the client's contact, the client's personality, and you weave that into your observation. So Manju, would you like to unpack that for our, for everyone? Oh, oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I can try. Well, <laughs> well, what I'm trying to say is um, it's not just process it's not yeah. just about asking questions but it is about seeing the person who's in front of you as a whole person with a rich um context and experience who shapes who they are yeah. and then when we kind of not just come with our predetermined questions and oh um, what question will I ask next which is what yeah. um beginning coaches do which I did when I started it's all about oh what can you know when the client's talking you're thinking about what kind of question shall I ask whereas this is really listening to the client exactly. and kind of who is this person and Whoa. what can I draw out from what that person already has established mm. and then use that to help um, them deal with whatever, whatever it is yes. that they're, they're brought today. I, I hope I'm making I sense. Think. Yeah. So let me unpack more for you in terms of what, the, what Manju is actually talking about. Do you remember at the beginning part, the coach was really very, very naughty. He tells the clients, what's the problem? But he set it, he set it up. He set it up. First, the coach said, you are from a corporate executive with high positions. 
So that is to consider the client's context first. And then stated that the client has great capacity, executive capacity. And before that, the coach says, these are the three facts that you have just mentioned. And the client's problem was, I cannot gain clarity. I do not what to do. So the coach was super naughty. He set up three facts, put it in front of the client, ask the clients to agree, is that the facts? And then praise the clients by saying that, you know, you got such a high executive powers and capacity. These are the facts that is so plain and simple. So what's your problem? That is to challenge the clients to think beyond the way the client is currently thinking by considering the context, the capacity, and the issue at hand. The issue at hand will be, I do not know what to do. The context is the client's past experience that the client has referred to, put everything together, set out a very provocative question by challenging the client, what is the problem here? That stretched the client's thinking in a very provocative manner to gain clarity on, let us define what's the problem. That's the starting point for any change management. Can we clearly define what is the problem? So far so good? Great, well done. Joseph, go ahead, Joseph. Yeah, Ben, at the outset, uh, let me uh, thank you for having this session uh, at, a such, at such an unearthly hour for you. I know it's not easy and you've done a fantastic session and thank you very much. A lot of learning today, right from, uh, as you said, what's the problem here? That question actually really stood out for me to, to reaching the trust factor of the client. Uh, and and then and then the wonderful metaphor which actually uh, you know made the client loosen up i i know yeah. you were faced with a very logical client who <laughs> who knew exactly what's happening in her life however was unable or was struggling with yeah. how to move forward uh, and the metaphor really in terms of i mean it it related so well in terms of making the client understand uh, what she actually uh, or, or rather should she um, go ahead with a business partner or at the moment be where she is uh, because she's done extremely well uh, one question i had been is and 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 obviously it was good to see you struggle also for the first time ever <laughs> from all the conversations that I've supervised. And hence I have a question on that. You have not seen me cry yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you asked this question and I wrote it down in terms of, and I think that was where the struggle was, is how will the support system limit your capacity right yeah. now to manage your business, right? And that's where the client, I think, didn't get it. So just want to know, Ben, what went through your mind at that point in time? I, I was very persistent to make sure that that question land for the client. So I, even when the client doesn't understand, I did not attempt to change my question. And I don't even attempt to change the way I phrase it. I still remain... Um, persistent that this is how I want it to be structured. Yeah. I have not changed the word limit. Okay. I use back the same and the only difference is I speak more slowly and in oh. parts hoping that it lands. Now, because the client's mind wasn't open up as fully as it is, not that the clients refuse to, but that's how the client's mind is, you know, it operates in that frame. So it has to be caught by surprise as in the rapport has to build naturally. So it cannot be depend on, you know, a questions or I mean, or just like rappelling to, you know, connect with the clients. It's kind of a slow to warm up, kind of like mind here. So what was really very challenging was that it's, I, I find it very challenging to soften it at the beginning part. And since I felt it was that, then I don't bother to soften it. So I decided to go for, you know, direct confrontation. And hopefully, hoping that the truth 
by encountering the truth that will open up the clients and allows me to find an entry to find an uh, entry to look at what really is the desire or the issue or something valuable as an insight because that's the only way to open up the client mind not the client but the client's mind a truth an insight a discovery or something like oh i did not see it in that direction and that's where the client's mind will opens up and let go of the gut and be ready to engage in more expansion of the thinking so in the first few part of the conversation you you see that most of the questions are very aggressive and provocative challenging in opposition if if i mean it's a lot it's it's like a court okay the, the defender's lawyer doesn't will not give way until they corner you to one point and they got you. I mean, that's how tough an executive conversation is, right? To, to break the same frame of, to break the frame of reference that creates the frame of reference that makes the client stuck, right? It's a very hard frame there. So, so, I, so, so the attempt was to be more provocative, to challenge the client's mind, to open up the perspective, and so that was a question that, you know, I, I'm not sure at that very moment, if the clients really cannot learn, what will I do? I really could not anticipate that. So I could only bank hard on, let's try it until the clients can see it. So that's where I think the clients slowly opened up and said, oh, okay, now I began to see that, you know, that that is something different in this experience. And that's where it opens up to the fact that the clients need help. But then again, the whole story in that little half is also kind of like a little bit smashed together, but it's as not compact as the first half, the first part of the conversations. So the later half is more on clarifying it rather than challenging it, you see. So the later half was much easier for me. You know, it's because it's more of clarifying the issue, but not challenging the presupposition, which is very difficult because the client did not bring in any frame of problem. Mm. Okay, there's no concerns. There is no presenting issue. Everything is framed very neutrally, as in I'm not giving you any way to come into the house. So to, to crack that open is quite challenging. And that's why it's a little bit more confronting at the beginning to clarify what really is the issue. So once we got that, then the issue was there, but it was, the issue wasn't clarified. And But to clarify the issue is, is much easier. So it's end up like, okay, not sure. Mm. <laughs> it's not what do you mean by that? Sure. Okay, I don't understand what do you referring to here? Can you walk me through and clarify that? So that, even though it was clarifying into what do you mean, but you still can feel that the gesture is still very provocative in that sense. As in, I heard you, but I don't quite get you. Okay, give me more clarity on that. It's not so much on expanding the mind for understanding. So it was in, uh, in that mode that the client's mind gets to focus and refine the issue to the point that, okay, now we understood. It's about a partner and not the administrative. But that piece was not available right at the beginning. Mm. right? So it was at that point, the clients refined the thought process very clearly. So now that we got it, and so that's time for us to go and have party. Yeah. She's from Romania. So let's party, party. Well, well, party, party. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it becomes like, okay, let's go for party. So and it, it kind of like match naturally to, to the client because the clients now get to see the issue. My is more open. And that's why we kind of like, you know, smoothen out the, the invitation for learning. Very interesting. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very yes. much for your insights. Coaching is not that easy as you thought. <laughs> <laughs> Requires both the art and science. Olivia, go ahead, Olivia. 
Um, thank you, Ben and Victoria, for this wonderful learning opportunity. I know it's very late for you, Ben. So just a quick, quick question. I'm just curious. Um, what time or where in the process you realize? Olivia, we lost you. There's a, there's an intermediate connection. We may no one, right? Just curious because it seemed to me at one point before before you are the question what I'm not sure what it means. Not sure, you know when the client says I'm not sure about that's the the point I think when when she she start talking about the trust but did you realize before mm -hmm. about that i'm just well, actually i realized what's the issue already but just that i decided not to do the work for the client okay it, it okay. sounds very obvious to me i mean <laughs> it's, not, it's not about the administration it's about the business partner right because from the way the client story is it's very obvious to me however i know i um i think from a coaching point of view you know it's better for us to evoke from the client rather than to input into the client's mind so that's why i took a longer route and say okay it's like a spouse now you know something okay and and you don't tell it so you ask questions around it <laughs> something to that effect okay yeah, when, when you are a coach, you do. <laughs> yes, so that's what coaches <laughs> do here. So, 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 so I thought it might be more useful to evoke from the client by saying, okay, what, what do you mean by not sure? Walk, me, walk, walk me through. That actually provided opportunity for the client to clarify and define exactly her storyline. And it was in that that the client's owned the learning, the insight that rightfully belongs to them. It's not fun if the coach says, okay, can I offer you something? It sounds to me that what you're referring to is this. And you just kill the, you just kill the party. Right? So that was the decisive moment where I think from a coaching point of view, you know, we can appreciate that from, from a, you know, versus an expert point of view. Is that useful for you, Olivia? Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> so this is withholding the insight from the client and ask questions powerfully to evoke the clients to own the learning and henceforth give the entire process greater meaning for the client. Cool? Wow. Do we have one last question? If not, we're going to say good night to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> one, two. Well, we love to honor some of our faculty members here. Magda has already shared, and we love Abdullah. Abdullah, our director of training for Nigeria. Abdullah, would you like to share something to, uh, to our friends here since we have a few friends from Nigeria joining us today? Okay, thank you. And it's, all, it's always a, a massive learning opportunity to be. Uh, in this live demonstration. And I think I'm taking away a lot in terms of reinforcing the process of the of a Coach Masters Academy, the ACC uh, methodology. And um, what I could only say is that stick to the process, it works, and uh, keep attending the live coaching uh, demonstrations because you, you sort of strengthen your muscles and you see different and diverse ways in which a coach can approach a conversation. Yes. So thank you for attending and looking forward to seeing you all very soon again. Thank you. So everybody, thank you so much. I just want to make a quick announcement. And that is in July, the second level of advanced training has a time slot that is 5 p.m. London time. Okay, so it's very challenging for us to put a faculty members to do the 5 p.m. London time. Okay, but if you know, but that's the only intake this year. 
you know, for you to hold on to the second level. So for those who are desiring uh, greater capacity and you want to really sharpen up your skills, well, this is a good opportunity for you to hold on to the board. So July, 5 p.m. London time. Now we need minimum 25 people to form a class. So help us to make it happen. <laughs> Okay, we already have five students in uh, you know, registered, so we need another 20 to make this a reality. So with that, we'll see you again next month for our International Coaching Week. Okay, there are more learning webinars that is happening and the announcement will be released next week. So do join us for those exciting learning webinars. Now with that, take care everybody, be joyful, and remember, smile. The world is really hard enough. So bring that wonderful smile and make this world a little bit different. Can do? Great. So with that, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Dedicate this song bye, to everybody. Bye, and bye. this song <laughs> is Live Your Life to the Fullest. Yay. Bye, everybody. Live life to the fullest before it outlives you. <laughs> I'm, I'm